Hey guys, me again, Freddy Crosser, and we're on an episode of No, this is P. Where today there's some kind of post commenter, as I just wasn't feeling well at the time, but at the moment. So yeah, this, today we're actually going to finally build the villager breeding farm. Let's go. Now, here, today I, I decided to implement on a nice little flat platform over there. And I also decided to use rubber logs instead of spruce or maple, because I didn't get a chance to use the rubber logs at, at the time. Uh, because, you know, it was a really short series and everything. And hold on, what is it? So anyway, here's me finishing the pillars of the- As you can see, the rubber logs do give up somewhat of an old school vibe. You don't want them fairy tale things where they have like a little tree hunter thing. thing. Yeah, that's what I was going, going for around here. Well, maybe it works better, but I decided to, But you know, rubber logs and whatnot. Also, I was doing some experimenting. So yeah, all that's you know, I built the, the dirt, the dirt double, and the air surrounded the dirt double with the water source, of course. And once that's done, tilling all the dirt so that so now the cows have something to build. Of course, it didn't iron my night area because that's that's the maximum that uh, one single water source can fertilize. At least for now, at least you know they might change it, but for now it's going to be like that for them. So yeah, we just plant that carrot over there, let it grow while we finish building the rest of the structure. If I pick myself, there you go. So yeah, here's me building the spruce platform for the dirt because you know it's just a little un little unrealistic that the dirt be hanging over there. Cause yeah, in real life you don't want the dirt be hanging on. My fall, create a whole huge mess. So once that's done, I decided to make make the rest of the, of the platform. You know, you guessed it, rubber logs. You know, just uh, in case the dirt around and everything. And once that's done, I decided to build like the, the rest of the cabin using rubber planks, which actually do look cool. I'm looking at the footage right now. Yeah, you do actually do give up an, an old school vibe over there. Yeah, and I'm really, really proud of how this one turned down. So yeah, all it's about doing is build the rest of the cabin. And of course, it'd be like three, three blocks tall. But hey, no one will be able to spawn there. There'd be like too, too much of a light left anyway. So yeah, also you know, build like the platform to where the beds, beds will be, and then also to light this horse up. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. Also speaking of speaking of walls, we we want to have like one wall that's completely covered up, while the other three walls will be like you know to see through. Because like I said, I was supposed to go for a camp vibe. And you can see right here, I built the bed platform, which is why I had all the walls closed in. So that limits, limits the villagers to seeing the bed platform and whatnot. <laughs> More on that later. So yeah, so yeah here's me actually finding the finish the roof and putting the torches inside the system. So that no monster will be able to spawn. And also the roof to prevent any rain from creating any draft today. Yes, you know, who likes a bit of rain on their crops? Well, actually, it might be beneficial, but you know, it might not be hay hot loaders. So, yeah, here's me actually trying to get the beds inside the little designated area, as well as the trap doors, because if you guys don't know, these villagers need to see, like, beds on memory. Like, if they don't see any beds, there's no point in them reading. But if they do see beds, then yeah, yeah we could we we pop them more people. So, yeah, it, it's a minimum of three beds that the villagers need to repopulate. As you can see right here, what two for the adults and one for the kid. We also want to, want to make sure we, we put implement the trap doors because we just can't go through them. But at least still one. So here's one over here that ha it still allows them to see through them, but not be able to pass them through. And here's one that'll actually drop the baby villagers down into the area where they will regrow and they'll be purposed for like farmers and whatnot. Oh yeah, here's me actually speeding up the carrot process pro so that we could have like at least alternating rows of carrots so that they grow faster and we could at least have them spread out for later purposes where the villagers can be willing to breed later on. And also, here's me uh, riding out that dirt, the dirt staircase so that mainly the villagers can actually, once I leave them there, to be, to be funneled over here. And here's me actually testing the drop, yeah, and this is at the sexy head. I didn't have my, my ring in my mouth at the time. Yeah. This is where I'll be building like the whole like drop off area with the be water. And it'll be like six, six blocks below. I did come across a cave, as you, as you might hear later on. But luckily, we have to bypass that. So yeah, this is where we're working right now, little area. We just want to... And the only thing let's do now is to take out the rest of the tire so that the village can come on around around and we go. And yeah, after this for a second, here it is. The area where the baby was will funnel into, and we're going to grow up. And then we'll push one full of adults, we have some farms that are on. Eventually, I did decide to make it a little more humbly for them. So here's here's footage of me actually replacing all the stone leg variants and replacing the, the the three walls and the roof with rubber planks, just to make it a little more homely for these guys. And there you go, it's a little more homely now. Well, except for the floor, but I don't think they even mind like a cold floor or whatnot. 
and all of the new now is to build the funnel system where the ray vision will, will drop down and eventually be funneled into the but don't worry there is going going to be water down there see and it's a perfect eight eight, eight long area so the water shouldn't be able to spill inside the room itself okay so all, all i have to do now is see if we design trap door so that the villagers won't be able to get out and put a rabbit to actually let them out because if it doesn't no villagers can can't basically open iron doors it's a common factor you know because they can't use redstone at the moment and here, and here's like one last thing we have to do. We have to implement the the, the on and off switch. Because yeah, as I've heard, this is a pretty powerful farm. And because these these villagers will breed constantly once once they're able to, we need to set them off to prevent any lags and whatnot. Which is where the sticky pizza comes in. So if you place it right over there, once activated, it will push the blocks, which will limit the the villagers' vision. Uh, of all be of all beds, which means yeah, if they can't see the bed, they can't breathe. Okay, and if they can't breathe, they can there won't be an overflow of villagers. Uh, no overflow, no lag. And on this server, it's very important that we limit anything that can lag the server. Very much limit. So yeah, after I added a few minor adjustments while I was landing in other decorative blocks, it was time to get to, to go to sleep and get the villagers inside the system. Luckily, they were alive, and there weren't really much problem. There was just one skeleton, but I killed them off screen. Yeah, all that to do now is to use workstations to lure them into my area, and into and out of harm's way. There was just one problem, though. <laughs> as soon as I let them out, it seemed easy at first. Like I would just pop out the two stations and walk over there, and I'd leapfrog them. What it didn't account for was was the workstations in the other in the, in the skeleton house and the room. The rooms, as as you can see right here, I showed a barrel. Provided it didn't actually stay put, the villager actually went to the composter that was over there, so I had to go over there and destroy it. But that was only part of the problem. The other part was that there, it was actually two stone cutters right over there, and the villagers was locked on to it. Eventually, I did realize that because yeah, I turned around and had to destroy them. Well, for now at least. Well, I didn't actually destroy them; I actually used them because as I figured, since the pickup box was already in my off hand at the time, I thought it'd be easier, easier to use the, these two stone cutters rather than the two bells that I bought from the old house from a while back. Yeah, and instead of that, it was just going smooth as here. I would just destroy the, um, the stone cutters, and they'd just walk over to the next stone cutter. And it's, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it was going smoothly, but like I said, I didn't account for the, the workstations in the other areas. Yeah, as you can see right here, I destroyed that stone cutter right there. And then going into this stone cutter over there, the other villager went to the other stone cutter, which was in the abandoned ruins area. And yeah, it took me a while, but I did figure it out. Well, that took like five seconds. And yeah, I was decided to. It would be best if I let the other that other villager over there on screen, close to that other villager, so that they can at least stay together. They can at, they can at least be out of harm's way, you know. Because in a, in a forest, more mobs would be tended to spawn. Eventually, they did find that bell over there that I destroyed to prevent them from there. But then that made me realize something. Villagers have like a specific schedule. Like there's a time for them to work and there's a time for them to meet up. So eventually I decided to cave in and put the, put the bell back just so that they can have the little short, short meeting, which would be the first and last. And then I would have to rush back home and get a bed so I could sleep near them. Eventually I decided to just take a bed from the a villager breeder farm, as you'll see right in this next shot right here. Yep, white bed, and just sleep near them. And that's when I noticed that the village, one of the villagers getting hurt. I was like, oh, whoa, what's going on? Why is he getting hurt? And then, as I walked right past it, poison ivy. Uh, apparently, villagers can't tell what, what which one is poison ivy, which one's regular vines. So they just kept getting hurt for them. I had, so basically, once I actually slept through the night, the next thing to do was to destroy all, all said poison, poison ivy that they could have walked, walked through. Yeah. Okay. I, I believe it's. I believe this is because like it's mods and everything, and, and villagers always uh, only go to go through vanilla dangers, but not like modded dangers. Event, event. Yeah, so after destroying all the poison ivy, I waited for them to waited for them to go to the war stations. Well, man. And, but if you couldn't, but you, if you couldn't tell by the footage, I was kind of, I was basically worried that they would just die on me. Like, because once these guys die, it's done. It's all game over. Yeah, so here's me actually following and looking for the villagers. 
l luckily it was time for them to go to get to work, so they were at the workstation over there. But, which after this, after then, I decided to just uh, go with the flow and just continue the process as as is by using the stone cutters from not only the skeleton but also from the ruins as well. So I decided to go use go use this this stone cutter and the other stone cutter that I'm about, about allowed to destroy and use them to to play a little of a leapfrog game. And what I had it was it was back to being the easy easy peasy lemon squeezy again. Yeah. Eventually, I did get them close to the to the farming area. As you see right here, yep, there you go, right over there. Yep, yeah, okay, there you go, next shot right there. <laughs> easy, what did I tell you? Very, very easy. So easy that I actually made it to the point where I would literally just take two of the workstations, go up to the dirt staircase itself, and then, uh, yeah, place them right there, and they go over to it. No questions asked. So finally, we were finally in the home stretch. The villagers were, were safe, and they were finally encased inside the farming area itself for all the carrots and whatnot. And yeah, luck luckily one of them was turned to a farmer, which is very important, as the farmer will actually harvest the crops and gather them in the inventory, which is important because in order for villagers to breed, they need to be willing. In order for them to be willing, they have to stuff in their in inventory, mainly food and whatnot. So I decided to, to help spread the, spread the carrots and whatnot through the system. You know, it's exactly some. Once that's done, I decided to get out there and fire the shrine in this little dirt staircase because it, it was not needed anymore. So yeah, man, I can't believe I actually pulled this off. So yeah, once once we have enough new, the villagers will be willing to breed, and we'll be able to use the, the, vill the villagers, any baby villagers, which will be funneled into that area over there as a point over there, down the cobblestone tube into the growing up area, where they'll be repurposed into the farm and stuff, or like a villager trading hall. Which is one of the unpopular things that the hermits do nowadays. Yeah, the next thing to do was just to return all the workstations that I took out from the from the designated areas. You know, because I'm nice like that. I like I like to preserve like the natural side of things. Like, yeah, as you can see right here, I didn't even need the barrels. So yeah, once I returned them, I decided to go back to, to the to the villager farm and look at this marvelous scenery. Man, yeah, this will definitely help with all the future farms and whatnot. Iron farms, relative training halls if necessary, and also some other miscellaneous stuff like wheat farms and caravans. Oh man, the possibilities are endless. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And also, feel free to check out my other stuff in the meantime. Don't worry, we'll be back in the swing days in the And yeah, I'll see you guys whenever.